Let's move to the next. One problem with caption generation is, as I mentioned for videos, it's the same problem for images. You're not gonna have enough data, enough labeled data. This paper is a sort of a data augmentation technique. So you're gonna augment the data that your uh, machine learning framework is gonna see. What type of data sets you have? You have pairs of, this is your data set. You have pairs of images, a training image, and a long sentence corresponding to it. Wouldn't it be nice if you could say, you could focus on parts of your image. You could have a bounding box here and say, this bounding box is corresponding to tabby cat is learning or leaning. You could have a bounding box around the mouse and say, this is a laser mouse. Bounding box around the paw and say, this is a paw, black laptop, etc. This way you are augmenting your data set. You start with the same data set, but then now each one of these small bounding boxes, pairs of bounding boxes and the corresponding sentence is gonna be added to your data set. Now you're gonna have a bigger data set to work with. And then you can use the framework from the previous paper on a bigger data set. And we know that neural networks like bigger data sets. So that's the idea of this paper. You want to augment your data, make it bigger. And then the rest of it is generating captions for not only your entire image, but parts of your image. This is an office telephone. So this is now your test image. That's a shiny laptop, or you can have one description for the entire image. The framework is exactly the same as before, but now rather than the entire image going in, you have the option of putting fractions of your image, like focus on the hat of that person, push it through an, an SCNN and get the corresponding vector and initialize the process of uh, conditioning on the image and conditioning on the words. And then you're always predicting the next word. Start is gonna predict straw, straw is gonna predict hat, hat is gonna predict the end. Okay, that's our objective. We want to start with this data set and increase the size. Once you do that, the rest of it is training as before. And you can infer the correspondences between these two. And this is exactly the same model as before. So the first part takes an image, pushes, pushes it through a CNN, corrects the dimension, and then you put it as an input to your LSTM or recurrent neural network, and then in the end, you're using your softmax to predict the next word. Mathematically, this is a description of that image up there. And then this identity is saying that you're putting your image at the input only, but you don't have to. As you mentioned in the last slide, you don't have to put it at the input, you can put it everywhere for each time step. Okay. Let's cut to the chase. And the chase is how we're gonna increase the size of your data. First of all, this we cover in part one of the course. You have an RCNN. It's, a, it's an object detection system. And its job is to put bounding boxes around objects in your image. So it's gonna put a bounding box around the dog and it's gonna put a bounding box uh, around that. I don't even know what that is but I'm sure the CNN knows. So you have a dog, you have that, and then you have your boxes. You can take these boxes and push them through CNNs. And then you're gonna take your image, push it through these CNNs, and then you're gonna get a set of vectors. Previously, you were getting only one vector. Now you're gonna get a set of vectors. And this is a set of vectors. We want up until how many objects that you found in your scene, maybe 20 of them. And then the sentence, you have dog leaps to catch Frisbee. So this is this sentence here. And this image is this image here, the training image. You push them, you, these are word embeddings. You push, you make them word embeddings. You push them through bi-directional LSTMs and you get your features in the end. Per each word, you're gonna have a feature. And then I'm gonna tell you what these are. So don't worry about them. In the end, whatever that you do, your image is gonna turn into a set of vectors your sentence is gonna turn into a sequence of vectors. Let's focus on the image now and what is, how are you gonna represent your images? We are gonna use RCNN. For you, if you took part one, you know what that is. If you didn't take it and you're gonna take it next semester, you're gonna know what that is. And some of you already know, so that's fine. Uh, this is an RCNN. It's an object detection system and you could use any object detection system. And it's gonna detect 19 you're gonna look for 19 objects in any image plus the entire image. And let's say IB is the image 
that is uh, inside that bounding box. For instance, this is the entire person, but now you're focusing on the hat. That's your image. These are the pixels inside each bounding box. And you have 20 of them. You take your image, you push it through a CNN, you multiply it by a vector, by a matrix to correct its dimensions to the ones that you like, and it's going to give you a vector. So for each box, you're going to have a vector. And let's say in the end, your CNN is giving you 4,096 dimensional vectors. You can take that and correct the dimension by this matrix. You are interested in dimension of H. And H, uh, you can choose it to be a number between 1,000 or 1,600. So it's a number that you choose. It's a hyperparameter. Theta C are the 60 million parameters of a network that you're using, the CNN, but they are fixed. So you don't have to train them. Now what happened, you took an image and then you turned it into a, bunch, a set of vectors in RH. And this is now the representation of your image. Cool. The representation of your sentences, these STs, you're gonna use a bidirectional RNN. And it's gonna, you're gonna have a sequence of N words. You're gonna use an RNN, maybe with some fancy activations like an LSTM, but then it's bidirectional and whatever that you get is gonna give you your STs in the end. So per each word, you're gonna have a corresponding ST. And this is where this, uh, this is sort of like an attention mechanism. So now we are going after this part of the figure. And this is an alignment objective. You can take a vector from your set. You can take a word from your sentence and then measure their distance. This is the cosine similarity distance. That's gonna tell you how similar are these two. Is this region of the image to that particular word? So now you're trying to align, and it's exactly your objective here. You're align, you are trying to align the bounding box for the cat, and the tabby cat is leaning. And in the end, per each sentence and image, image K and sentence L in your data set. So per each, for each pair of image and sentence, you're gonna need a score. You're gonna need only one number. What are you gonna do? You're gonna look at this. And then you're gonna take a maximum over your vectors, over your boxes. And you take a maximum, you put it here. And let's say the bigger it is, the more white it is. So you take the maximum, you put it there. You take the maximum here, you put it here, etc. And then to turn that into a single number, you just sum them up. You're just doing a summation of the maximum of this V, I, T, and S, T. This is a set, that's a sequence. You're representing images and text. Now you want to know how similar an image is to a text, and that's gonna give you a single score. That's the score. And what is GK? GK are the set of image fragments. So it's the set of these bounding boxes. It's exactly this set here. What is GL? It is the set of sentence fragments. So it's these fragments here, these sentence vectors. And in the end, you want to assign each word to the best part of your image. So you want to assign tabby cat is leaning to this part of your image. What is a good objective function for that? This is your last function. Okay, it's, it looks a little bit complicated, but once I explain it, you're gonna understand it fully. For this training uh, data set, some images and some sentences are gonna correspond to each other in your data. Some images and some other sentences, they are not gonna correspond to each other, okay? If they correspond to each other, it's gonna become SKK. So K is the entire set of images and L is the entire set of sentences. So it's indexing that. If K is equal to L, your image and sentence are pairing together. So they are matching. So what are you gonna do? If a new image is gonna come in and its score is bigger than the pair that are already matched, then you need to penalize it because that's a mistake the model is making. This sentence is paired, I mean, image K is paired with sentence K and image K cannot be paired with any other sentence. If that happens, if this is bigger than this, forget about this one for a second. If this is bigger than this, the maximum is gonna be this term, maximum of zero and this is gonna be this term and then you're gonna penalize. And this one here is just to give you a margin. It's gonna make the task a little bit harder. You need to satisfy that property by a margin. 
So here I was looking at an image. You can pick a sentence and then do the same exercise on all of the images. If an image is violating this property, it has to be penalized. If the score between a sentence and an image is bigger than what it has, what it needs to be, penalize it. And that's, that's gonna give you a loss function. You can do your alignment training. And this loss function is encouraging aligned image and sentences pairs to have a higher score than the misaligned ones by a margin. And this is your margin. I think I'm gonna stop here and continue next session. For those of you who have questions, you can stay and ask. I'll be around. Um, does this mean that every, every image has exactly one sentence that corresponds? In your data set, yes. So each image has only one sentence that and it corresponds to. That's your training data. And those, those sentences are unique. So there's a there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the number of images and the number of sentences. Yes. So in your training data, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between this image and the corresponding label. So this image doesn't correspond to two labels in your training data. There is only one label. Yeah. And, and the opposite is true as well. Yes. So for this sentence, there is only one image. In reality, that might not be true, but in your training data, it is under your control. The yeah. only part of this paper that is under your control is here. It's your data. Um. Because in the other one we were dealing with earlier, it was kind of like a given an image, choose from among a bunch of different words that might work or try to try to construct a sentence that might work. And this is a little bit different. This is just like a selection process. No, that one was also the same thing. For your training data, it's the same type of training data. Wow. You have an image, you have the corresponding label. But the task, it's a generative task. Yeah. An image goes in and then multiple good sentences might come out yeah. because there is a probability distribution there. Each time that you run a language model, it's going to give you a different sentence. Yeah. Same, and same thing here. We're going we're gonna to penalize it if it's far from the ground truth, but it, it's going to be generated and it's not necessarily going to be one of the, the sentences in the, the set of labels. Here, what we are doing, we are going after this alignment. So for now, I'm in this step and I want to increase the size of the data. But once that is done, then you can use that data in addition to your previous data to train the model from the previous paper. Because yeah. more data is gonna help it more. Okay. okay. So this is just a data augmentation. And the idea oh. is that you are mapping images and words to the same uh, manifold, to the same hidden space. Yeah. And once you do that, you can come up with these scores. The one last question I had was um, <clears throat> the assigning certain words, like in this in this training image with the arrows, like tabby cat, pointing back to the tabby cat and paw and so on. That's that's done using the maximum location, I'm guessing, right? Like if you know that that word um, activated V1 or activated V7 the most, then that's you take that um, word and point back to the certain image, um, what do they call it? The sub image or the, the, um, the bounding box that, that maximized V1 or maximized V7. Yes. So now you're talking about, this is the training part of the alignment, and then you need to infer your alignments. And yeah. that part I haven't yet explained. Ah, That's gotcha. going to be next session. Okay. And you're absolutely right. Among all of these, uh, given this sentence, among all of these uh, boxes, which one are you going to align to this? Yeah. That's the inference part. Yeah, that's cool. And once that problem is solved, you have enough data to train this model and improve the performance. Yeah, cool. Thank you. That helps. Sure. sure. I had a question. Sure. Um, so it's a bit fast for me, so I'm still trying to understand what's going on. So the data set is an image and a paragraph, and then we're putting that image through a... Um, fast CNN to get the bounding boxes. Oh, sorry, RCNN. Um, RCNN to get the bounding boxes. And then we are taking those bounding boxes as vectors and putting them through, um, is it LSTM again? Uh, or just an RNN? Uh, so first of all, what we are doing here is we are going to take an image and we are going to turn it into a set of vectors. An image goes in and a set of vectors is going to come out. The vectors okay. represent the bounding boxes? and their vectors are representations of the bounding boxes. 
they are vector representations of the bounding boxes. Yeah. And then what so previously, the previously what we had was a single image going in and a single vector coming out. Now here what's happening is a single image going in and a set of vectors coming out. 20 vectors rather than only one vector. Mm -hmm. And then do we also insert this paragraph as a set of vectors with the, those set of image vectors? Exactly, the exactly. There is no RNN. Actually, the RNN that you have is going to turn word vectors or words tokens into vectors. Basically, you take a sentence in English and then you're going to turn it into a bunch of vectors. So the same way that here you had an image and you were getting a set of vectors, here you have a sentence that's going to give you a set of vectors. So the first part is here. You take an image and it's going to give you, this image has three bounding boxes, a bounding box for the dog, for this, and for the entire image. And that's going to give you three vectors, one, two, three. Here you have these words in English, dog, leaps, to catch, frisbee. And then you're going to read off the location from your dictionary. These are going to become integers. You take those integers, you turn them into uh, word representations. You take your word representations and push them through a bidirectional RNN or LSTM. That's happening here. And then that's going to give you your vectors in the end. A sentence goes in, a set of vectors is going to come out. An image goes in, a set of vectors is going to come out. And the dog leaps to catch a frisbee is similar to the paragraph we had before with a tabby cat is leaning, all, this whole thing? No. So this data that you see here, this image and this sentence, are your data set. It's like this cat and then a tabby cat is leaning on the wooden table, etc. All of the sentence. Yeah, that's what I'm confused about. Is that a sentence per bounding box or is that like the whole thing and do we get bounding boxes and are we supposed to match them? Uh, so the final aim is this is your data, but that's not enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to augment it. You want to augment it with these bounding boxes and the corresponding short sentences. That's your final aim. We haven't re yet reached that. But if you do that, we are going to call this multimodal RNN. This is from the previous paper. So please don't confuse this RNN with this RNN here. They're different, okay? This is a different step. Okay. Once you do your data augmentation, then you're gonna use the algorithm from the previous paper, which is here, these two lines, to do the captioning for you, okay? But this algorithm needs data. You can either work with your original data set, which is small, or you can first do some tricks and increase the size of your data in a smart way. Now that you have a bigger data set, you can train this more efficiently. Now the question is, how are we going to solve that problem? If I give you an image, if I give you a sentence, how are we going to increase the size of the data? Because now this training data, you're splitting it into one, two, three, four, five data. And if you manage to do the same thing for every single image, and sentence in your original data set, your size of a data set is suddenly five, five times bigger. Now we are trying to solve that problem. We want to increase the size of the data. And one idea is that, what if you look at the portions of your image and try to label them in an automatic fashion? So you, let's take the face of the cat and then label it as tabby cat is leaning, okay? So, so how is that happening, um, tabby cat is leaning? Is that... Um handmade like a person did it or is that automatic? No, this is going to be automatic and that's exactly what we want to do. First of all, if it needs to be automatic, there is going to be need to be there is going to be a need for uh, training and then inference. Am I right? Like any other machine learning framework, you're going to do training and then you do inference. Mm -hmm. For training, the data that you have are this. First, you're going to take an image and turn it into a set of vectors yeah, using okay. a bunch of CNNs. Then you're gonna take this sentence and then turn it into a bunch of vectors, ST, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's gonna give you a sequence of vectors, a set of images, a set of vectors for your image. Now, if you can manage to solve this problem, if you manage to align a particular word, for instance, tabby, to this portion of your image, then at least you solve some part of the problem. Now, this portion of the image is being matched to tabby. 
this portion of the image is going to be matched to the mouse. Okay. Oh, so, so, so this is what you want to do. So do we send each word in the sentence to the image and try to see where it, be like it goes to pretty much? Exactly. Yes. Sentence? Yes. Then exactly. we just create a sentence. So if we have three words matching to the same area in the vector, we know that that's a sentence for that bounding box? Yes. Okay. Thanks a lot. And, and that's exactly what you want to do. You have a vector in this set. You have actually 20 of them. You can pick one. Let's say you pick VI. You pick a word in your sentence. This is a set. That's a sentence. So this is part of your image. That is part of your sentence, a word in your sentence. Because they are in the same space, they have the same dimension now. After these, these operations, after these representations, they have the same dimension. They are in the same space. You can multiply them together and compute the a, distance. Just a regular dot product? Yes. So this is just a dot product. Now that you have your dot product, uh, that's good. Now you know with what score this part of the sentence is matching this part of the image. But this is untrained, so there is no training going on. We need to train it and come up with a loss function, with a good loss function, okay? But uh, for you to have a loss function, you need a single number. How good is your method doing or how bad it is doing because this is your loss. But what is the data that you have for that? You have pairs of images. You knew that tabby cat is corresponding to this part of the face, your problem would have been solved. But unfortunately, you don't have it. So you have to train it. What are we going to do? We have these pairs of images and sentences. If they match, they have the same index. SKK means that there is a match. If they don't match, they have different indices. And now right. K is counting your uh, images. L is counting your sentences. OK? Now, this is saying that if there is a mismatch, penalize. Because I want this to be the bigger number. And I want this to be the biggest number. Now, K and L are not only for this image. It's for the entire data set that you have. Now, this I'm is where you're learning from all of your images and sentences at the same time. Only how it's doing. It's unsupervised if we don't have that. How do we know yes. if it does a match or not? Uh, see, we are using all of the information that we have at hand. Mm -hmm. We built a model. That's the distance between two vectors. And we came up with a single score that's going to give you SKL. And what information do you have? Whenever K is equal to L, there is a match between this image and the sentence. And whenever they are not equal, there is a mismatch. And if there is a mismatch, that is not what you want. You don't want this cat and the laptop to be misidentified as a dog. OK, and the laptop being, I don't know, this object here. So that's all of the information that you have, and you're using it. But then uh, this is the training part. The problem is not yet solved. In the end, what you want are actually, if I give you an image, can you tell me which parts of the sentence correspond to this space? And there is going to be another round of optimization for that. OK, for the inference, there is going to be another catch. Sorry, I'm still not understanding how the loss is trainable. I thought that the loss is supposed to be fixed and looks like SKL is trainable. And if I understand correct, SKK is also trainable. So I'm not really sure how do we get a loss that is untrainable from that. Uh, this is trainable. What do you mean? So uh, I guess I'm confusing myself, maybe. Um, maybe you're overthinking it. Let's see. Uh, so it's basically trying to match a word to a part of the image by multiplying them like the dot product and seeing how similar they are. And that's SKL. This is SKL, yes. And SKK is? So maybe you're confusing the indices. Maybe mm -hmm. I ask a little bit of question to understand what you're thinking. What is K here? What is K indexing? Is that the words? Or is that all the words? I think. It's all um... of the images in your data set. So K, if you have a for loop, it's going to be all of the images in your data set. Okay. OK, so you have a for loop for your entire images. L is all of the sentences in your data set. An example for K is this image. An example for L is this sentence. So that's just an example. But then you could have many examples. Am I right? Yeah. So that's your K and L. 
And in deep learning, you want to learn from examples. So one example is going to teach you something. Another example is going to teach you something else. And then in the end, you're going to have a statistical model that learned something from your data. So far, so good. Yes. Yeah. And the only thing that you know is that S K K is whenever you have a match, yeah. whenever you have an image matching a sentence. Am I right? Okay. Yeah. Whenever they are equal, there is a match between the description and the image. And whenever they are not equal, there is a mismatch. There should be a mismatch because we labeled that. This is our data. Okay, so if there's a match, SKK is one, and if... Um... No, it's not one, it's whatever number that is. And it's trainable, oh, okay. it's trainable. You can, there is gradients going through all locations, going through VI, ST, and VI and ST. VI is coming out of your CNN. So probably you're learning this WM and perhaps fine tuning the CNN a little bit, but not too much. And this ST is coming out of this word embedding, the RNN, and then this WD. These are the parameters that are going to get optimized. So yes, SKK might change from one iteration to the next iterations of the optimization. SKL might change. But in the end, you want them to be ranked properly. You want SKK to have the highest rank. So please don't confuse K and L with I and T. They are different, okay? This summation is over the entire data set. This I and T is per each image or per each sentence. Okay. Is it clear now? A little bit, I'm still really confused. I don't know, maybe I need to sit on it for longer. Um, so what is not making sense? Because I need to know. So we're going through the training loop and then we're trying to match an image with the entire sentence. So I'm still not following on how do we get this parsed sentence, like these smaller sentences out of it. Oh, that one it... I haven't yet explained. You are not understanding it because I haven't yet explained. Because that's this part of the paper. You have every single right not to understand it because I haven't told you, okay? Okay. So what we're doing right now is just trying to match this entire sentence with this image. Um, exactly, yes. So we so just now, shuffle the data set, I guess? Yes, so now match. what you want to do is to learn these representations. So what you're doing is you have an objective to learn VI and ST. That's your last function, for, through your last function. So through your last function, you want to learn VI and ST. But VI and ST are parametrized through a CNN and RNN. Okay, so, so so far what we did was taking an image and taking a sentence and trying to see how similar they are. Exactly, if, yes. Okay, so we haven't, okay. So we just shuffle the data set? Like, do we shuffle um, the images with random sentences and just see exactly. how similar they are? Yes, so this is exactly okay. the summation here. Okay, that makes a lot of sense now. And you want the ones that match to have a higher score compared to the ones that don't match. That's your objective. So for mean... now, that's your training objective. And I guess we're doing that because we don't have a pre-trained CNN. I'm, I'm a bit confused about like, why do we have to train from scratch? What is a cat in the image? Uh, what you're training, these CNNs, you can do some transfer learning. Okay, so don't worry about that. Okay. These parameters could be fixed or they could be optimized over. Okay. Mm -hmm. But these parameter, you're definitely learning. This WM, definitely learning it through this process. And once you learn WM, and given that you know your CNN, you're gonna know your vectors. Okay, makes a lot of sense. So instead of an image, we're taking um, the vectors of the bounding boxes, and instead of the words, we're taking that um, those vectors of um, sentences that we had, and we're trying to match them and see how similar they are. In, like, exactly. After shuffling the images and sentences. Exactly, yes. So the shuffling okay. is happening here, and the matching is happening here. So you want the sentence, the pair of sentence and image to have the higher score. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um, what the is that? that don't. Makes a lot of sense. What is that part with the max on the top right, with the image sentence score? Which one? Uh, uh, on the right, with, with the but, uh, sorry, top right, where we have the dog leaps to catch frisbee. So how does that okay. relate to that? Yes, so that's your image, mm -hmm. and that's gonna give you your vectors. This is VIs, this is your set. Am I right? Yeah. And this sentence is going to give you these vectors that's happening here. This is the representation of your sentence. That's the representation of your image. So now that you have these representations, 
we can multiply them together to get the, to get these colors. Oh, and so that's a similarity exactly, between. That's exactly this measure here, a measure of the similarity. But then it's a lot of numbers. You cannot work with them. You want to turn them into a single number. You do a max pooling here. The maximum of these three numbers is this white one. The maximum of these is this gray one, etc. And then you sum them up to give you the score between this image and this sentence. Okay, makes a lot of sense. So the bounding boxes, if we have three, it's going to be like uh, five by three, and then we multiply it by three by five. Sorry, um, I'm, I'm, missing, I'm mixing the dimensions, but uh, uh, yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. We're not multiplying like one bounding box per row, or is that what we're doing? Uh, so there is going to be one bounding box per each row here. Yes, you're right. Okay. It's, for instance, this dog here could be the first guy. This, I don't know what that is. That object is the second row, and the entire image is the third row. Okay. But here you, have, here you have 20 of them. Okay, makes a lot of sense. Okay. Cool. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. And then re the rest of it I'm going to explain next session because you actually need to solve this problem in the end. There is another step I'm not telling you. If you are not understanding that part, it's okay because that's why it is. Yeah, I wasn't sure how do we actually pass those. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Cool. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Okay. Bye. Okay, see you next time.